This episode is about the key to manifesting what you desire, which is finding the map on how to be you and getting to your core essence and believing that you're worthy. Within this episode, you'll also be guided through a healing experience around worthiness and releasing beliefs of unworthiness, as well as the judgment around it, and connecting with you, what you desire, and what makes you feel like you. This episode may not be for all audiences. Please use your own discretion. If you're uncertain whether these topics will trigger you, you can check in with the show notes, which will give you a heads up about certain um, sensitive topics. Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Embody Podcast, a show about remembering and embodying your true nature, inner wisdom, embodied healing, and self-love. My name is Candice Wu, and I'm a holistic healing facilitator, intuitive coach, and artist sharing my personal journey of vulnerability, offering meditations and guided healing support, and having co-creative conversations with healers and wellness practitioners from all over the world. This episode is sponsored by the Dream Classes on Skillshare that I created. I love dream work and what I found was experiencing the dreams in my body as well as preparing my body to experience dreams supported me in deepening in my dream life. So feel free to hop on to check out these dream classes that will support you in the embodiment piece, the support of your physiology so that you feel calmer and have better sleep and are able to remember your dreams better at candiswoo.com slash dream classes. Recently, the third class on developing your imaginal space and your ability to connect with imagery and feeling sense in your body just came out. And there are two other classes as well and more to come about exploring your dreams from an embodiment perspective. Skillshare requires a membership except for the free classes and you can receive two months free of membership if you connect to the link through candicewoo.com slash dream classes. Welcome back, everybody. It's wonderful to have you here on the Embody Podcast. I'd invite you to just take a moment with me to breathe, to notice yourself, to come inward, arrive here, and allow this little space and time for you to be with whatever comes through for you today in this exploration, in this podcast, and in your heart. Welcome. So I have a bit of a cold. It's on the tail end, so my voice sounds a little different, but I'm excited to talk to you today about manifesting and the key to manifestation of what you desire. So this came clear to me that I wanted to talk about this because more and more increasingly as I do my healing work, as I release untruths from my being, from my energy, allow my body to move through that, my ability to attract and be in sync with what my desires are and allow my life to unfold from that place is much sharper. So about two weeks ago, I was talking to my healer and I was saying, I don't know how all these things I want are going to come together. I just don't know. And she said, well, what do you want? And I wanted to be around my family. I really was loving it at that time and right now in Michigan, just enjoying spending time with them. And it's such a sweet time. It's a time where I'm watching different parts of my family heal the past and come to more love. And it's a time that I'm just watching people enjoy things in my family. The struggle is much less. I'm experiencing that as well and just loving them for who they are. I also wanted to live in a place that I love. I wasn't quite sure if Michigan was that for me. I grew up here and lived here until I was about 25 or 6. And at that time, I left feeling like I never really wanted to go back. But now that I'm here, I really enjoy the energy. I love how grounded it feels. I love that I get to ride horses here. And that's a major part of where 
my love and my energy wants to go is to connect with horses and to learn how to be a good leader with horses. If you've listened into any of my past podcasts, you already know that. And I truly want to grow with horses. I'm not sure if I'm going to be having my own horse soon or what, but just want to be closer to them. And the other thing that I really wanted was love. I wanted romance and sensuality and the ability to create with someone, someone that would be a life partner, someone that is ready and has their heart open and is also conscious of who they are and their energy and themselves. And so two weeks ago, I didn't really have that many of those pieces put together. I just knew I wanted to be around my family. And that's really all I knew. And what I did was I felt into all the pieces of what I wanted and got even clearer about what that looks like and how it feels to be with that energy and felt into that. This is a process that many people do, visualize something and connect with how they will feel when they have it and imagine that they already have what they desire. Imagine that that experience is already here and they already feel that way now and to feel it in their bodies. And that's essentially what I was doing. To be very personal, which is also going to be a suggestion of mine later in this podcast, is that I actually pleasured myself while I was imagining all the things I wanted because it gets me to an even deeper and more intimate and focused connection with the thing that I want. And it matches and aligns with sexuality, which is our creative energy. So yes, I do mean masturbating and picturing the desire that I have happening to me, with me, and in my life, and letting my creative sexual energy and power hold the space for that and align with that that I desire. That's an idea I actually got from a friend of mine through Family Constellations. And the first time I heard her say that, I was like, what? That you do that? And as I got more in touch with my own fantasy life in general, it just seemed to make sense. It just naturally arrived there where I was picturing just all the things that I desired and the deepest desires that I have of loving connection and sensuality and the way of being, of connecting with another person in the way that I'd like to. Of course, there are other de desires, as I've just told you, of finding a place that I want to stay for longer, being with my family and being with horses. And I didn't picture that this time necessarily because all those things I feel will just fall into place. And they, I feel very worthy of it. But there was a piece of, can I have this love that I truly desire, this kind of relationship, this place of connection with another person that is this way? Because in some ways, that's new to me. To have all of the pieces there that I want in the relationship and in the other and in myself. Growing into my worthiness of the kind of love that I want and the kind of life that I want, pleasuring myself at the same time was something that brought it even more to fruit in terms of the feeling and the embodiment. And if we think about the things that we truly desire, the things that we really do desire for our lives, don't they turn us on in some way? Don't they light up our being, our heart, or different parts of our body Maybe there's a feeling of expansion somewhere in the body when you think of the thing that you really want. If you're not thinking of the fear or the absence of it or the lack of it, if you're feeling that that's actually possible, there might be an opening in your body. There might be electricity or a current of energy moving because our creative energy connects with liver, the liver channel, and that feeds itself from the toes and feet up into the inner thighs and all the way through the groin area and up the body. So it's giving inspirations, giving breath and life. So as I was looking at all these things that I wanted in my life, I just thought how impossible for all these things to come together. I just don't even see a way. And at the same time, underneath that all, I knew that there was a deeper trust. I knew that I could trust my life and that these things would unfold when they 
when they would. And yet some, some part of me just really wanted, wanted it now and wanted to know now. So here we are two weeks later, and I spent a bit of time in San Diego doing somatic experiencing advanced training. And at the same time, I was visiting an old friend. This friend is somebody who lived directly behind my house growing up. We literally have lived there since we were eight years old. Both of us, eight years old, moved into that, those houses. And we moved through all those years and into high school together. And we'd drive each other to school. We would really had no idea about each other's lives, just a little bit. Like we witnessed each other from afar and we uh, were friendly to each other. And now we have found each other again, and the love between us is incredible. This relationship is one that I couldn't even dream of myself if I were to create all the details. It's just more than I could even fathom and imagine. And there's so much surrender to what's unfolding. There's so much possibility. There's so much coming back to myself and him coming back to himself. And us doing that together and creating from this place a very deep desire to know ourselves and to know each other. I'm in awe already of what we're creating together and the enjoyment and the love that's just exuding from us. And we've explored him coming back to Michigan and creating some workshops and seeing what we'll create together. So two weeks ago, I just had no idea that any of this would even happen. And I actually didn't realize my love for Michigan and the feel for Michigan right now was growing in this way. And who knew that someone I even knew and someone that is not here now would want to be here. And my experience with horses is growing and I'm able to go to the stables this week a lot and ride with a friend while my teacher is gone and just have a little more freedom Everything is falling into place, and I can hardly believe it in some ways. So I wanted to offer you this story, this experience, as an introduction to this podcast today. There's a second segment to this manifestation story, which relates to this entire episode. And if you are on my newsletter list, then you received an email this last week about this moment of choice that I felt in me to surrender deeper into my path, surrender deeper into my spiritual being and continue to choose more wholeheartedly the path of joy of this moment that leads to the next and to truly trust in that and to be on this path that looks pretty irregular. So within this conversation, there is a baseline in my thought process about surrender to what is and surrender to who you are as an essential part of creating the life you want, manifesting what you desire, being who you are in flow. This kind of surrender also means to embrace all the pleasant and unpleasant and what comes and to take each moment as a learning, a lesson of love, a lesson of growth in this life. The closer I got to what I specifically desire at the core, not what I desire from all of my wounds or from my fears. For example, because I used to have a fear of not having enough, I wanted to have a lot. I wanted to have a lot of money and uh, things. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your desires that come from a fear. And what I am talking about is looking deeper into your desires and what they are and what's underneath them. Is there truly freedom underneath that or not? Is it bound to an outcome? I'll talk more about that later, but what I want to say now is that we are always manifesting. When we hear about manifest this, manifest that, we're always manifesting, we're always Experiencing a physical outpouring and expression of our inner belief sets, of the accumulation of inner belief sets, vibrations, energies, 
meanings, desires, all coming from all sorts of places. Some of those are very true to our core and connected with our spirit, a very free place of oneness and love, one that is abundant. Some of our desires connect with our soul karma, where we've had dynamics of this life, past lives, the lineage of our family, our personal history, and the things that we experienced, the belief sets we came in with, and we want to go the other way and find the other polarity or experience the other side of something. And there's the very egoic place of just seeing our earthly life and going with society's consciousness and what we've in general as a larger society agreed upon as success or what we should be doing in life and the fears and the things we should and shouldn't do. There are many different layers of where we're acting from and where our mind can tell us to feed into the places that we fear or feed into the things that we have been taught that are right for us and right for the world. None of that is bad and none of it is to blame yourself. There are just some aspects of what we are creating in our lives, what is showing up through us and around us. Some of those aspects are just so deeply, deeply, deeply unconscious. And all of these experiences that do manifest are opportunities for us to see ourselves, to see what is in this for myself. What is this showing me about the deeper beliefs that I'm having right now, who I believe I am? No belief or meaning that we take on should be judged as bad or good or bad, really, because with good comes bad. It's just all part of this unfolding of layers of who we are so that we can truly find ourselves, so we can find who we are at the deepest, the spirit and the love and the abundance that we truly are, the worthiness. So we hear it sometimes that you can be anything. You can have anything and be anything, do anything. When I feel into that, that sense, it feels like way too much, like just everything is too much pressure to figure out out of all the possibilities. And in some people, I experience that that leads to fear of missing out. Like I can do everything. I can be everything. But if I choose this, then I'll miss out on that. So there's a lot of anxiety around that, fear around that. And it's hard for some people to choose one thing or three things or focus their priority, focus their energy on what they truly desire because there's just so much. I don't know that that idea is that helpful most of the time. It's helpful to realize that there are possibilities when you're afraid to be yourself. So if you feel like, oh, there's this thing that I want to do, I want to be, want to move towards, but I don't know if it's possible. And to have the thought, it is possible because you can be anything. You can do anything. That can help lift some of that fear. Like, oh, okay, if, if everything is possible, then I can do that, the thing that I do want. But when we don't have a clue of what it is we're meant to be doing here, what it is that gives us life or what we truly deeply desire, then thinking that you can be everything can bring up that anxiety. Not for everybody, of course. That might be incredibly helpful, and I'd love to hear different experiences that people have about that. The bottom line is everything is possible. We can be anything because the way this universe is created is from all possibility and all probability. The word OM encompasses the energy of all that is possible and that everything is possible. So that is true. There is a reality to that. However, we come into this life as an individual soul with individual desires, and we have the ability to connect with all possibility, the ability to connect with oneness and love and unity, and to be at union with the entirety. 
And it is a gift to see what our individual soul brings to this life, what desires and what gifts, and what offerings just by being. And for that to connect up with and in harmony with all others, that is an extremely powerful place to flow from, to be, to be as the universe, as this individual being in connection with the universe. That may all sound very heady. So I want to just take a moment to breathe and let that soak in. So in this life, perhaps we can't be everything, not out of principle, but out of practicality, out of the fact that we're born in this human body and this individual soul, that we have a set of gifts and unique aspects. We can develop all other aspects if we want to, but it might take a long time or we might not have the energy and why. But we're here with a specific set of gifts and perhaps we can't quite choose who we are, but we are who we are. That at our deepest, there's already an expression of life that wants to become fuller, that expression of life that is you, that wants to live in its fullness and express at its fullness at its greatest potential. And that aligning to your specific essence can bring the most enjoyment in this life, can bring the most beautiful gifts to the world, to yourself and to others. Perhaps we can't be everything, but we can only be who we are. So who are we? Who are you? Manifesting is about getting to that core and being in such loving connection with the core of yourself and releasing or completing what is not you. The belief sets that are untrue and distorted from truth. The energies in your being that want completion, that want to find resolve, that are stuck in your body. Completing and releasing all that so that even more of your energy and your attention is directed right in connection with who you truly are. Who you are is love. Who you are is powerful and worthy. Who you are is a multiplicity of energies that you don't need to identify with one of them or a set of them, but many. And that there's flexibility and fluidity. When we complete the wounds that we are trapped in or are bound within, that we're repeating the patterns that lead us to a same or similar result, all of that is our energy on repeat. And it's taking up a lot of energy to resist the outcome that we don't like. It's taking a lot of energy to continue to hold those energies in our body, the fear, the movement that wants to complete itself, but gets looped back in. And when that's all complete, we have freedom, we have expansion, we have a presence of our being that can be right here and right now that responds to the moment, is adaptive and flexible to what is going on right now rather than getting triggered into a response that was helpful in the past or incomplete from the past. This language I'm using about something complete or incomplete comes from both family constellations and somatic experiencing. For me, in my experience of both of those, is that a lot of what we're repeating in our lives wants to find completion. We don't need to just let it go, although if you can do that, great. But a lot of times when it's something traumatic to the body or overwhelming to the body in the past, then 
our body isn't really ready to just let it go just like that by our mind and energy letting it go, but the body needs to complete something. The movement wants to be had. And we are here to work with our bodies. So the expansion of ourselves into freedom, into not living out of those wounds, those wounds being completed and resolved, this expansion creates a potent energy and power to create, to get in touch with what you desire because it's clearer, it's less clouded by all the other things. You're already much more in the flow of who you are organically, your body just unfolding. And the power and potency to draw what you want towards you just by wanting it. And the letting of it unfold and the trusting that it will come. This may be a good pausing point to ask yourself, how in touch with my essence, my core self and truth am I? How much am I naturally and organically moving in life versus forcing or pushing? And what wounds or untruths, belief sets out of fear, am I living from? As you ask yourself these questions, feel free to pause and take more time with each of them. And also be super gentle because this is all about loving. This is all about loving what comes up and noticing the feelings, noticing what happens in your body, noticing what wants to be honored and seen for what it is so that you can get to know yourself even deeper in terms of who you truly are. And so that you can experience this human form in its fullest with all of its emotions and all of the ways of being of this body that wants you to partner with it, that wants you to have a pleasant experience here, that wants you to be in your inner truth outwardly and to live as you came to be, as it is your birthright to be. So we're working with our vibration, the collection of energies, feelings, body sensations, belief sets that are stored in our energy, that are stored in our bodies, in our hearts. And the more that our vibration, the more that our being connects with the deeper truth of who we are, not the fears, not the meanings that we've picked up along the way that don't hold a real reality. And what I mean is the body feeling that those are true or not true, not just our mind, but the more our body resonates and emanates from the place of truth, the easier and clearer it is to know who you are and Manifesting is not an action, it is just, it just is, it just flows from there. So I invite us all to take on the journey and the process of unfolding, healing, seeing, loving, sorting truth from untruth, completing and resolving all of that instead of pushing to manifest. But doing all of that in order to arrive at who we are and enjoying the process along the way. Sometimes when people are thinking that they're manifesting from a place of love and freedom, and this is something that I've done as well, is that I can depend on the outcome. And I may not realize I depend on the outcome until the outcome is something I didn't like. And then it's a chance to look at and feel 
what fear is emerging right there? What aspect of the fear that you already know probably is showing up here? So then there's more loving, more being human and experiencing it. This opportunity to love this moment and have more expansion out of it by surrendering to it, feeling it, leaning in and taking yourself on a healing process with it, allowing the healing to come forward. The experience of not getting what you desire is the lesson. It's the opportunity that if taken can lead you home to yourself. In yoga, all of this work is called karma yoga and also jnana yoga. Karma yoga being the study of action and the intention, the seeds of intention that are underneath action. And often when we have sanskara, which are impressions or beliefs, untruths, distorted truth, when we have a sanskara that guides us to take action from it, which is what I was talking about earlier, acting out of your wounds or fears, then another result comes from that. And if we keep tail spinning on that and go down that pathway farther, in more and more iterations, then we're just acting out of the result of another wound and another wound and another wound. And we have very much lost ourselves. But if we can see the sanskara, we can see the distortion, whether that's mentally to start with, and then letting it drop into how it feels in us, how we act how our body is, how we move from there and feeling through that, completing that if it's something the body wants to complete or resolve, then we don't have to do more iterations of that. We transcend it. We heal it so it no longer is part of us. We are no longer identified with it and we can move back into the wholeness and love that we actually are. So the second piece of connecting with the flow of who you are and manifesting what you desire is the belief that we are all worthy of abundance and that what we desire is possible. Which if we believe that we are unworthy or things are not possible, those are also sanskara. Those are belief sets that are not truth. Even if your reality, what you believe as your reality or perceive as your reality can confirm it, because we like to do that, we are actually worthy. But not every desire is worthy. So coming back to the seeds of your intention, the baseline, the roots of your intention, and where that desire comes from, That's what makes something worthy. If our desires come from this egoic place of the mind and the fear and the basic self that just fears death and fears not having enough, if it's coming from there, then we will certainly manifest that. We will certainly attract those experiences that show us what our belief sets are, what is happening in our vibration even if we don't know it in our mind, what's happening unconsciously. But if our desire comes in complete connection with the core of our being, with truth and love, expansiveness and interconnectedness, the oneness that we came from and are through this individual self, then then our desire is completely in connection and harmony with the entire universe, then it's completely worthy. Our true nature on this planet is wholeness, wholeness within ourselves, wholeness with each other, with earth, with everything that's here. And that means it is our power to embrace both pleasant and unpleasant, both life and death, to be with all of those energies on the dark and the light sides as tools, as parts of who we are in our experience. And when we resist certain aspects, when we resist 
sadness or anger, when we resist working with it within ourselves, then we become enslaved or we start to enslave it. In the series Magicians, I've been watching on Netflix, season seven, I believe, this man says, that which you fear or you hate is what you enslave. When we enslave or when we resist, we inevitably create that thing that we don't want, and we use a lot of energy doing so. So how about leaning in and not resisting? How about feeling what that is and coming to more wholeness so that that can complete itself and resolve? And you can go deeper with who you are, who you actually are, because this isn't it. This meaning the fear that exists isn't you. So I want to transition now and just offer an experience, a brief experience of connecting with who you truly are, what you desire, and releasing some of the judgment around any belief sets that come with it, acknowledging these and just bringing some light into what's there for you. So feel free to get comfy and in a private space with yourself. And take a moment to notice your breathing. Allow yourself to release the day and release any thoughts. Just noticing if there are thoughts and letting them pass by. Sense your body and just feel into your being, the deepest, deepest, deepest part of your being as you go into the heart. So we'll begin with connecting to you, and just connecting to a time or a place where you felt like yourself where you felt affirmed in who you are or validated or this feeling and experience that this is who I am. I feel just like me. This can be any time in your life. If you need more time to arrive there, feel free to pause the podcast and if you have something, go ahead and tune into that experience. Set yourself right in that moment where you felt like yourself. See what's around you and if there are other people with you or objects around you, whatever is there, picture it. and experience what was happening or what you were doing as if it's happening right now. Feel in your body what's going on now. Is there any space in your body, breath? Is there any sensation happening? Any emotions? Be curious and open about any emotions because sometimes this can release sadness or feelings of unworthiness or other fears. And sometimes it can bring openness and a sense of beauty or peacefulness. Whatever is here, honor that. And stay with this feeling of when you felt like yourself in this moment now, feeling it in your body. And as you feel that, connect with what do you desire right now in your life?
And if what you desire comes in a form or a structure like, um, I desire to have X, Y, and Z or experience X, Y, and Z, get deeper. What do you desire to feel when you have all that or when you are experiencing that? What will you feel when all that is here? Get to your core desire. And feel into what it is that you will feel when all this is here in your body right now. Again, connecting with movement, sensation, emotion, images, and breath. And if any moment your fears or doubts take you or distract you, just notice those and come back to feeling this experience as if it's already happening right now. And now I invite you to look at any feelings or beliefs of unworthiness, of doubt, of fear around what you desire to feel. And for now, just noticing those fears and doubts, beliefs, any beliefs that you're not allowed to have this or feel this way for any reasons at all. And I want you to look at all of those beliefs and say out loud, all of these beliefs are untrue. Notice how you feel as you say those words. All of these beliefs are untrue. And I forgive myself for judging myself for believing I'm unworthy of receiving and experiencing what I desire. And that sentence again is, I forgive myself for judging myself for believing I'm unworthy of receiving and experiencing what I desire. And one more, I forgive myself for judging myself for believing I'm unworthy of having what I desire. And you can switch the words around and say, for believing that I'm not allowed to have what I desire, or any words that come to you in terms of how it resonates for you. And I want you to look back at the fears, the doubts, and beliefs And as you feel into those fears, picture that part of you. Maybe that part of you looks just like you now or looks like a younger version of you or a blob of energy, an object, whatever this part looks like. And as you connect with it, ask it, what do you need? And listen for anything it says. 
without any judgment or filtering, what do you need? And whatever it says or shows you, imagine that for your fear now. Perhaps it needs a hug. Perhaps it needs assurance. Or maybe to release some anger or sadness. Maybe it needs to run. Run away from something or be protected. Give this part of you, your fear, whatever it needs in your mind's eye now. Let yourself feel what's happening inside. At any time, if you feel overwhelmed, go back to the moment you felt like yourself that we started with in the beginning. And it doesn't hurt to even just tap into that and then come back to feeling into the fear and what's here for you or what it needs. And if you need more time with it, feel free to pause the podcast and take your own time as long as you need. And just right now, if your eyes are closed, open them gently and just look around, look around your space, give your body a little bit of self-touch to let it know that it's here, this container that supports you in life. As you look around, tune into what feels pleasant to look at. And feel free to just say these words out loud now. I release any feelings and beliefs of unworthiness. I release any feelings and beliefs that I'm not enough. And I forgive myself for judging myself for any times and places that I did not trust my life. And just notice how you feel as you say those words. Feel free to repeat them, rewind and repeat. If there are more emotions coming through, just stay with them. Let them move through. And again, just coming back out and seeing your environment, letting yourself arrive back here. Feel free to place your hand on your heart and just give some thanks to yourself. Gratitude for taking the time and energy and space to heal, and to look at yourself and to know yourself. Thank you so much for following through that journey with me. And I'm just delighted to be able to share that with you. These are pieces of all sorts of healing that I've journeyed through myself and keep using these tools, as well as pieces that I've gotten from different healers that I combine for for what works for me. I mentioned very early on in the podcast when sharing my own personal experience that You can pleasure yourself or masturbate to give your intention a congruent power, your ultimate creative energy, and 
that the things that you truly desire can open up to let that turn you on. I'm not going to walk you through that, but if that is something that resonates with you or you feel intrigued about it, feel free to try that and um, see what that brings you. A lot of times when I do that, I enjoy it while it is happening. And then if, if I have an orgasm or have some sort of release, then also a lot of emotions release sadness and other feelings that want to move out. And that's a really powerful part of it. If you do want a bit of a guided process around that, I interviewed Harmony Niles earlier on this year, and she did some work and a little podcast on core erotic themes. So tuning into your sexual fantasies and what, uh, what you desire sexually. And what I found is that when you get to the sexual fantasies that are yours, if, if you do feel connected sexually, if you get to the ones that are unfiltered and untamed for yourself, you can often get to a feeling that you want to experience in your life, a very deep and core feeling that you desire. So you can find that at candicewoo.com slash harmony. And there's also a couple of other podcasts that I recommend if this episode resonated with you. There's the worthiness episode that you could not be more worthy at candiswoo.com slash worthiness. And the parts work, embracing the many parts of yourself with voice dialogue and internal family systems work. That is at candiswoo.com slash parts. I really enjoyed having you here on this podcast with me and journeying with me in your healing. It is wonderful to have you here and to hear any of your feedback. Uh, feel free to email me if you have an experience you want to share, or questions, any desire for future podcast topics, anything like that. I love hearing from all of you listeners. And before you go, I'd like to invite you to listen to the podcast that came before this one. It's been over a year of podcasts, and the way that I designed this uh, podcast series is every other week there's a guest, a guest healer or a wellness practitioner, where we have vulnerable conversations about their lives and about who they are and what they offer in the world. And the other weeks I do solo episodes where I bring a topic and then usually I have some experiences on there and either those experientials are within the podcast like today's or they're in additional ones, separate ones where you can tune into just that podcast over and over if you need to or want to, or you can share that with someone who might need that experience or meditation to support them in their lives. So it's really quite a menu. It's not necessary that you listen to every podcast in order. And a lot of my listeners that I hear from are telling me, a lot of you are telling me that you're just picking and choosing the ones that feel right for you and that resonate or strike something in you. I love that. And that's absolutely what it's made for. So enjoy and check out all the other podcasts at CandiceWoo.com slash podcast. And I invite you to sign up for my bi-monthly newsletter if you want to stay in touch and get updates about workshops, retreats, uh, self-love notes, and the podcast itself at CandiceWoo.com slash embody. I am wishing all of you love and that you are loving yourself no matter what's going on. And if you're not to see that and come to more witness of yourself and loving of yourself, embracing of this human experience that you're going through. And as always, I'm here to support you if you would like to have any support. If you're a new client or someone new to the process of support with me, you can have a free 20-minute consultation. You can find that at my website as well. Thank you so much for joining today, and I'll leave you with some music so that you can wind down and enjoy. And I'll see you next time on the Embody Podcast.